we're going to go over an upcoming bill that got passed in the House, uh, reinstating the draft for the military. We're going to go into the housing market, and we're going to go into interest rates, because these are all things that are super important that will impact your business. All right, so, Keith, what's going on, big dog? Big dog. I'm just on the other side of that 26, man. They can't get me back in, so. Me too. But in wartime, that can get quickly and easily expanded. And if you look at what, what other countries have done, it's 18 to, I believe, 50 or 55. Some places it's 40. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, you don't want my broken ass up in there again. Oh, I'm, they had me once. They should have kept me. You're probably a lot more capable than a lot of the soy boys they'll be fucking uh, recruiting. Yeah, that's the other side of this conversation. If I had, if I go back today, how long do I stay in, or do they arrest me for knocking one of these little kids out? I have no idea. I have I mean, no idea. But to catch you guys up to speed and why this is being talked about, uh, a bill just passed in the House reinstating a, uh, a draft for men. They know what men are, guys. Our government now knows that men have penises and girls have vaginas. Just want you to know that. Just just on this just, topic. Just on this topic. Any other topic, they're still confused about who can give birth, who can have a baby, uh, and everything else that comes with being a man or a woman. But on this topic, and only on this topic, okay, which, by the way, where's all feminists jumping up and saying, hey, what about us? Um, but that'll be a minute. Uh, well, if so we weren't the- blacklisted, we definitely are now. Yeah, that was it. That was the comment. All right, just wait. This is you. Just wait. I'm, I'm all. I've. I've just, just got my Mondays gun. back. Yeah, <laughs> I've just yet the gun. All right, so now men eighteen to twenty six can get drafted. Don't don't love that, and I think let's let's really talk about why this is happening. They've had recruiting issues and recruit. Uh, recruiting challenges now and why do you think that is well we don't pay our military members what we should okay we you see the devastation when these guys get home they sacrifice everything for us and many of them end up homeless and on the streets but we'll take care of and we have billions to go to illegals that are raping and murdering everybody coming into the country not exactly a uh, an awesome trade-off okay and then the worst, the worst part is like you have generals in dresses, okay, dresses, and promoting, you know, very, very soft cultures. Let's just say, very soft. And who is going? Who wants to sign up to do that, right? When you're trying to be part of something, when you're part, trying to be part of a team, a company, you want it to be the best of the best of the best, right? You want to compete. You want to get better. The military should be no different. You want the best and the brightest to serve their country. And if you're having people that are not the best and the brightest at the head and you're showcasing these people, what message are you sending to people that you're trying to recruit? And this is me. I'm an outsider looking in. Keith, Keith can probably, Keith, why don't you, I'd love your opinion on this. Dude, I've got some friends that are still in, you know, they're at, 2022 20, coming up, you know, in that time frame, and it is so hard for them to go to work every day. Yeah, and you know, I think it's like that with everything. There's evolution to all of it, but <clears throat> I think in our generation coming up, military was you, you kick ass. Like, yeah, that's what military was supposed to do. And now it's like, yeah, lead with soft white gloves and coddle. And I just don't know that, well, A, I'm an entrepreneur now, so I could never go fucking work for anyone or have anyone else tell me what to do, right? Because yeah. I've ruined that. Okay. Uh, but number two is I don't think that I, I could uh, keep my foot out of their ass. This yeah. is what it is, right? Yeah. I mean, we're two completely different leadership styles uh, where it's like in the military, you know, that's, hey, do why haven't you already done what I'm about to tell you to do is yeah. how we were taught. Yep. Figure it the fuck out. 
don't let me ask you. Just do it. I'm like, oh, I'm read your mind. Right? And now try that shit today, you'd be in jail, right? They'd probably arrest you, fucking demote you or whatever else. But yeah. um, I don't think the draft works. I think that shit backfires. I think uh, they're going to have to figure something else out. I got an idea on how to figure it out. Maybe quit fucking recruiting the same way you've been recruiting for 40 years. Yeah. But maybe let's try that. Like, I get it. High schools and going to the high school is like probably the best recruiting tool. And it probably still is. Figure out a different way, though. Right. Whether it's, uh, I don't know, back. And I'm sure they still do this at some level. But dude, they were giving out bonuses, sign on yeah. bonuses. Heavy. I think mine was 75K. Right. When I fucking went up. Nice. If we would quit sending money to every other country, we might be able to do that shit again. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to entice people to go to work. Yeah. This is what it is. That's, I think that's money much better spent than uh, going over to, I don't know, Israel, Ukraine, any of Actually, whoever. Doesn't Whoever matter what is our favorite of the week. No, doesn't they all get matter it. what fucking country. <laughs> they all get it. It doesn't matter what country. <laughs> oh, you want to speak here? You can have some. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I, you know, I, I don't know that this thing works out the way they anticipate it working out. I think they're it's a quick grab for bodies, and yeah. they'll get some, but mm-hmm. I don't think it ultimately is a long term play, fix. Play for yeah, them. I, I, I agree. And all right, so the next 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 big topic, guys. Housing prices. All right. So this topic, the draft, eh, nothing really you can do about it. Nothing you, you can do with your business, but housing prices. So I, I have a lot of conversations with realtors because I invest in real estate on the side. Mm-hmm. And I have one agent I bought three properties from in, in the last year. And he's telling me there's a lot of pent up demand. Okay. And, these, and it's going to make prices take off again. What's held prices back so far and what's held uh, a lot of the closing back so far is where interest rates are. So when interest rates are high, it's, you're, not as a, you're not able to afford the same amount of house as you do when interest rates are low. And so that has slowed buying, but we're starting to see prices go back up again. So what does that mean? Keith, what does that mean? Uh, you know... I, I, I really wish that I could sit here and say that means positivity in uh, the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, what I think it means is it's, it's a sl- supply and demand issue again. Yep. I think it's fake equity. I think, uh, you know, two, was it two years ago when, or three years ago, maybe really when it coming off of like COVID, when it really started where, you know, the hundred and fifty thousand dollar house was all of a sudden worth four hundred thousand, and people were paying four fifty in order to buy the thing. Yeah, and now those individuals are walking away from their mortgages and realizing that after, you know, after the first or second year you're in there, there's this little nifty thing that the uh, tax office does, and they reassess your property value. Yes, uh, and when that happens, your bill goes up. Uh, and in my case, you know, it went up almost a thousand bucks a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, for my house, and I expected it, but, and it still sucks. Now, imagine paying two, three, four hundred k over what you should have for a house uh, with a seven percent interest rate, and then get another twelve hundred dollars on top that you can't run from. Yeah. Oh, and you can't sell the fucking house because no one's buying that shit right now. Yep. So I think that's what it is. I think it's it's uh it's it's some tomfoolery in the market. I think, uh, you know, they're pushing some agenda and that's for, let's talk about the housing market since that's been the negative play for the last 10 years, since 08, right? It's always been the culprit of change is the housing market's going to blow. Well, if they keep this shit up, it's going to blow again. So I I, I think it's just bullshit, fake equity and people being being retarded. Uh, I, I do think, I can tell you this, I do think, Prices will continue to go up um, slowly, but I hear I don't think the true demand is there. I agree mm-hmm. with your assessment on that, and I think uh, most 
and people don't know this, but BlackRock is like the number one purchaser of single family homes. Okay, so you have BlackRock and Vanguard that are still to this day buying up as many single family homes as they can get their hands on, which is scary. All right, uh, that means they are trying to are one prop up and make it look like there's a lot of demand, and two take a ton of supply off the off the market. Well, that's what they did, right? BlackRock did that in the commercial space. Yes. Coming off of 08 and 09. They just bought what was it? I don't, I don't, do not quote me. Was it 80% of the commercial space or some crazy shit that was vacant they went after? Probably. Yeah. It was and, a and stupid I, number. And I guarantee you, if that's the case, it's June 24. I guarantee you that they sold those, all that portion of their portfolio, either prior to COVID like right before COVID or prior to 22. And here's why I keep saying that. The commercial space has taken an absolute nosedive. It's going to continue to take a nosedive and it's nowhere near done. Okay. And and that's the actual reason, Keith, why I bought a, a home to move my, my company into and not a commercial space. Because it's easier to sell a f- single family home. There'll be more upside to the single family home. And honestly, it's more comfortable. Dude, I just moved my office back to the house because I got tired of driving to the office. I believe you. <laughs> Makes I a mean, difference. Legitimately. I, I picked up three, four hours of work each day now just to walk into my office. Yep. And to your point, I don't even want to keep my commercial space because it's more of a pain in the ass than it is anything else right now. Yep. I'm going to keep it. So don't. all my friends don't need to call me and tell me, you know, you're a crack, you're a crackhead, don't sell it. Uh, but it's the reality. I didn't. I, I don't want to use it anymore. Because it just doesn't make any sense for me to go there. All of all of our employees are virtual, so we'll see. Um, but on, even on the flip side of that, the rental marketplace in the commercial space isn't that fucking hot either. Because it's, no. I'm not able to get anything rented out right now, honestly. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a stretch. But that's because the same reason you don't need that office. It's the same reason 80% of the other companies don't need that office anymore. Right. That's, and that's why the market's getting crushed. The only thing that I've been able to move on the rental side is medical, medical yeah. stuff. So yeah. I got Harmony Healthcare in one of my buildings last week, and it was great. Nice. I just need a couple more. There you go. So. Let's do that. So, guys, if you own a business, you're in if Jacksonville. If you own a medical business, I got yeah. the plug in Jacksonville, Florida for you. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And then, uh, listen, finally, last but not least, and I want to go over this because, one, if they listen to the show, they probably know how interest rates work. But interest, yeah, yeah, hopefully, right? So they remained unchanged. Basically, the Fed had a meeting and said, hey, we're not going to change what prime is right now. Prime is just the overnight rate, okay, that banks borrow from other banks. And what is that right now as of the 17th? I don't know. I'd have to look up. It's probably between seven and eight. I could be wrong, but I would guess between seven and eight. Yeah. Okay. And then, so basically they came out and they said, Hey, we don't think we're going to be uh, changing interest rates. So we're going to be steady. If anything, they're going to reduce the rate once this year. So they're pricing in one reduction and with more reductions to come next year. Hold your breath. What? What is it? No, I mean, that, that's what they were saying all this year, that we were going to have four reductions and we've not seen anything. And Prime, yeah. as of the 17th, is at 8.5%. 8.5%, okay. Yeah, 8.5%. I thought so. So, so you, paid, you paid 11% for a car note today. <laughs> yeah. Dude, S- SBA is at 11.75 right now. Right. Yeah. People don't understand that. Um, here's, here's my thought process on the whole thing. I think that the reason they anticipated four rate reductions this year, and now they're saying they're going to leave it the same and they'll reduce them next year, is inflation is nowhere near the levels that they are reporting it is. Right. Okay? I think inflation is actually still through the roof. It's still very high. And they realize that they cannot reduce it and keep inflation improving or at least in their terms under control and there's only so much data that they can come out and alter or fake uh, until the average person just says hey i know they're saying this but i'm feeling the complete opposite 
And so that's what I think is going on with inflation and interest rates is they don't have it under control. There's a reason they're not rolling back um, the prime right now. And they're not going to be doing it in the future because inflation is not under control. Now that's just me taking a guess, but I, my guesses are pretty, usually pretty right. You know, about two years ago, I said the only way out of this mess of COVID would be a world war. Okay. Because they printed so much money and our money is basically worth worthless. Now the only way out would be a major world war, which is not good. And I hope I'm wrong on that too. I'd like to be wrong on these two things. Yeah. I'd like for you to be wrong too. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. Uh, we're a long fucking way away from any interest rate and or inflation. Yeah. Uh, yeah quietness or refuge, whatever you want to call it. Shit. Business owners now more than ever have to be liquid. You have to get rid of the toys. You have to get rid of all the bullshit or, yep. and go to your fixed expenses. And we're coaching all of our clients on the show right now. And I, I'm even leading by example. I know several people who it's not that I don't have the money to keep paying for the shit. I don't want to in this yeah. time. I have a a boat out back. It doesn't even belong to me. It's my buddy's boat. And I'm like, hey, keep that shit on my dock as long as you want because it's keeping me from buying a new one. Yeah. Because I don't want to. Like, first time I was telling my wife this the other night, she's like, I'm, I'm really confused as to what's going on with you. I'm like, why? She's like, you sold the car, toy number one. You sold the boat, toy number two. You don't have a Harley right now, which is another toy I like. Mm -hmm. You don't have anything. I'm like, yeah, and, and 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 I'm okay with that for the first time in forever. Mm -hmm. I have no itch. So I'm trying not to get one, and my buddy's like, hey, man, just let me know when, when you're ready to go get your boat, and I'll pull this off. And I was like, dude, I, you could just leave it there. Yeah. It makes me think I have a boat. It gets used as much as our boat did anyway, and it's, it's perfect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't have a fuck with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I just I say that to say this, like, Right now, really, people need to get super curious on what the fuck they got going on financially because there's no telling where this thing's going to go. You're right. And I, I don't see it getting any better. It's going to get worse, I think, before it gets better. Yeah, I would agree with that, too. So, and I, and I wouldn't take anything off the table either, guys. All right? Not to go extreme panic and extreme worry, but when there's so many different things that are impacting what's going on geopolitically and in our country, you have to assume worst case scenario and hope for best case scenario. But if you don't clearly define, okay, what could be the most amount of chaos and the least amount, it's very, very hard to prepare. So I would really think about, hey, what happens if global war breaks out? What happens if financial system collapses what happens if the dollar collapses by the way dollar collapsing financial system collapsing would be the same exact thing okay saying it two different ways um not that they are the same thing but they would lead to the same thing okay run through all these different scenarios and what's right. your plan what do you do where do you go how do you operate that's those are the questions that you need to really sit down somewhere for an hour, two, or a weekend by yourself in a closed off room and really think about those things, okay? And then if you can think about and plan for those, anything that comes other than those, and not that it's gonna give you peace, but you'll be in a much better position to handle it. Yeah, you may not, you may not have a whole lot of peace, but. No, I don't think any of us will. That's just the truth. Um, yeah, guys, sorry. This is so, uh, serious. Debbie fucking downers. Hey, we're not trying to be Debbie Downer. We're trying to give you what you need to win. Okay. Right and between the eyes, people. You're going to yeah, get it right, right between the eyes. Yep. And what's accurate, right? Like what, how to prepare for these things. All right. So, Hey, do us a favor, share this with someone that needs to hear it. Uh, when you share it, hashtag WTF, WTF. All right. Appreciate you guys. Share See you. Take care.